Hi, nice to meet you. My name is Francesca Carta and I was a product owner of uh, an internal development platform for almost five years and now I'm a delivery manager at Mia Platform and I help companies in uh, creating, building and adopting uh, platform strategies. Hi, I'm Nicolo. Um, I'm a writer. I basically uh, spend my time uh, writing and creating content that helps uh, engineering organizations in uh, building uh, developer platforms and I've been working with Tech for the last uh, four years. Okay, so the title of my talk is Platform Engineering is not about tech. And that may sound weird considering it's the latest buzz in our crowded world, but actually from our experience uh, we've been seeing that in most cases when platforms fail, the reasons are not technology reasons. And the thing is, platforms do fail, they fail a lot. This is a couple of predictions from Garner and other market analysts that say that approximately 70% of platforms, so if you're de currently developing a platform, you may be at risk in this situation, will fail to achieve the expected results by the end of 2025. So trying to prevent this, I think is important. We look at why platforms are failing and what we can do to prevent this risk. Okay, but and before we like go deeper to analyze this topic, uh, uh, I would like to start uh, from what is platform engineering and what's the goal of platform engineering. Uh, we can like see a company like a group of people divided maybe in developer teams that create application and most of the time, every time uh, in each organization there are some common aspects like for example the capabilities processes, uh, life cycle, team, uh, infrastructure, configuration, and more. You can think on what you want. All these capabilities that are shared among the organization are a platform. So I don't know if you can give us a definition of a platform. Yeah, we like to say that platform is a common space where people share value. And I think that in this definition we have all the important elements that we want to highlight in this talk. So a common place, a common house, if you may, for the organization where people, so the developers, the engineers, but also the product owners, the business technologies, the real organization involved, try to share value in their everyday tasks in delivering digital products, modern applications to the market. Yes, exactly. And Ma, so if um, a platform is a common space, what's the, what's the goal of platform, of platform engineering? I think that this image is really helpful to understand what's the goal, because the goal is a self-service developer experience. We found this uh, definition that for us is pretty accurate, that says that the goal is a fictional self-service self developer experience that offers the right capabilities to enable developers and others to produce valuable software with as little as overhead as possible. The goal we should we should add in mind that the goal is always the developer experience and to enable the developer to be uh, autonomous and to have a frictionless developer experience to produce value, for producer valuable software. This is uh, our goal and we should not miss this when we build uh, a platform. But so why 70% uh, of platform will fail uh, in the future? We hope less, but what we see is that typically when a platform team starts its journey, the first discussions, the first decisions, most of the conversation are around technical choices. So what are we using for doing this pipeline? What are we using to create infrastructure? What are we using to do role-based access control? You are not thinking about uh, developers and focusing on the needs, the dependencies, their job is a lot of focus typically on the adoption, the implementation, the standardization maybe of new tools. Uh, probably you're pretty familiar with this meme uh, of uh, represents the complexity of the current uh, cloud native landscape and uh, choice uh, many of us have <laughs> tried to do oh, here is Argon Flash, but in the end, number of other tools and definitely all these implementation architectural choices are very important i'm not saying they're not important but the fact is typically our engineering teams are very good at taking these choices and these choices 
are not the point where our platform will fail. There is a number of other reasons. Yeah, because I think uh, we are uh, we are missing an important piece, uh, and I think that we can uh, um, recover this piece uh, starting from the Conway Law. Uh, Conway Law is one of the historical law in, uh, in software engineering that says that any organization that design a system will produce uh, a design was a structure is a copy of the organization's communication structure. Conway law um, is important because connect the the architecture the architecture of the code and the communication structure of the company. These two typical are connected. Then we can also see Conway uh, on another perspective. So that if if we have a specific design in, in mind, we can adjust how people within the organization communicate and work together to make that design a reality. This is important because if we want to bring a platform and a, a platform team and uh, enables our developer, we should also change uh, how we communicate inside our organization and inside our company. Um, most of the time, these two aspects are connected, are always connected, and we cannot miss uh, this connection. And when we try to adopt a new architectural pattern, we should change also our organizational uh, pattern. I think that uh, this is the key that we are missing uh, when we try to adopt our platform strategies. Uh, I don't know if you want to share something else, or we can maybe... Yeah, no, I think, yeah, basically, the, just the first lesson probably we can take home from this is that we need to remember the strong connection between technology and people, culture, organization, the way we work in our organization, job, and that the two things must uh, work together and that we must put focus on an effort and investment on the two things. If we just invest and focus on the technology, organization, culture, process will not just come along yeah. naturally. So now we come at the fun part of our talk, so the pitfalls that we see along our way and in this uh, journey that we made in the past years, uh, we saw some pitfalls and we want to share with you uh, some the main that we find. It makes so many platforms fail. <laughs> no, we did not fail because, <laughs> because uh, we learn a lot in our journey. So, uh, Nicola, do you want to start uh, with the first one? Uh, first is, I think, pretty obvious, but honestly, it happens a lot of times in new platform initiatives. Uh, when we start building a platform, often the mission, the purpose, the scope is not so clear. There is the clear perception that the current way of doing things is not sustainable, we have a bottleneck on operations, something must be automated, something must be done to improve things. And so we start, uh, yeah, we just go out in the field and start playing ball and try arrange some things, automate some things, uh, try productize then these, these things that we do. But yeah, this is not actually let me say, a proper design and a product initiative and platforms and products. So this is an important aspect to consider. And yeah, how it can end up when the mission is not clear, I think is pretty obvious as well. So uh, I won't say more. Okay, the, the second one is the lack of political capital. Um, we saw that most of the time platform engineering teams are like new teams uh, with a lot of energy. And uh, maybe also another strategy is to start with an MVP and so to start with uh, like some trial to see what we can do with the, with the platform or we can bring in our organization. But like uh, typically this approach uh, brings a new level of difficulty that when you have to uh, scale and to um, achieve a greater audience, uh, you have to reach a uh, political capital that you still don't have because you don't have like uh, yet achieve something bigger and so you have to do like an extra effort to, to uh, bring some people uh, to use your platform. This is like something that so the platform team should have initially the, a political capital that can help them uh, scale up with the, with the platform so that the platform can also bring with a little platform, with an MVP, with a new team but should reach this political capital 
to along the way to reach all the the goal that platform has uh, wants to achieve. Uh, so the, the third one we can see uh, it's the typically it doesn't match the developer's expectation. This is a great problem. This is a great problem. It's understandable. The most easy to think reason is uh, you don't invest enough in understanding the needs of developers in the first place. And this may happen, but it's not always the case. Many times the expectations are missed because of misalignment in communication. So you are very passionate about your product, you want to sell your platform initially, you want to sell it to the world and you promise big things. And it's not so clear from the beginning that maybe in the first months you will be delivering just smaller features. So if they're waiting for the moon and you just deliver uh, something smaller in first place, even if you will eventually arrive there, this can create disappointment and disillusion and negative perception of what you are achieving. So being able to effectively communicate what you will actually be delivering is a very important feature. Yeah, I think that another important point is the internal competition. Let's be honest, uh, among uh, most of the organization we saw, uh, we tend to think that uh, uh, I know better how to do this stuff, uh, uh, my team is greater than this, uh, uh, or uh, for example, both team wants to achieve or work on some technologies, uh, or uh, all the teams have their uh, uh, way of work and not want to uh, work with the other team. This is a very typical inside organization, but the internal competition is really something you should work uh, uh, when you think uh, of a platform because uh, it's really important to uh, know that this exists and to analyze this and to work with the team where you can think this is a real problem, a real issue. But I mean, also, in, if you're working in good faith, in, especially in enterprise organizations, you may have, for very good reasons, different teams working in parallel to some developer tools and there may be some overlap among these tools and the, the, over time this overlap may grow and this will create the competition. So yeah. even if it doesn't start from, let me say, wanting to compete. Yeah, another th uh, point is really important is the, I think, the balance between innovation and stability. Uh, we know that all the developers would like to innovate all the time and also try the new technology and bring the uh, latest uh, version tool. Uh, and this is really important and I think that it's really important to stay keep up to date with the, with the innovation. But I think that all the platform needs also a stability and the developer that use the platform needs also a, a stability and uh, you should reach a maturity point and so with your team and when you work at a platform, you should also every time consider what's the balance between being an innovation or, or what's the stability of your platform and what innovation can your platform uh, support and, uh, and adopt and what's the innovation that can really make the difference or sometimes you should also uh, work more on the stability uh, despite the, the innovation. This is also uh, a factor where uh, you can uh, see some 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 captures. Yes, and I think this brings us to the sixth aspect uh, we see as a uh, important reason of struggle of the platform in initiatives. Obviously, this is often overlooked in most uh, digital product development initiatives, and is the cost of maintenance of a digital asset, as it may be our IDP. In a dynamic scenario, such as the cloud native environment, we have technologies that evolve very quickly, but we want to avoid that the current platform we are developing becomes tomorrow's legacy. And this comes at a high cost of continuously maintaining and innovating. And this cost may simply not be sustainable in the long run for organizations whose goal in the end is not to be managing a enterprise platform for engineering, but is developing digital products. Yeah, I perfectly agree. And I think that the seven point is one of the most uh, critical and, and crucial because uh, the, I think that the poor internal communication skill uh, 
it's where we think that it's the point where platform uh, fail. Um, the build a consensus uh, around the platform is very important. And uh, when you want to uh, build a platform in your company, focus on uh, the internal communication of, of your platform, talk with uh, the developer that will use your platform, talk with the uh, uh, the engineer, talk with the operation, talk with everybody inside your company to discover how they work, what they want to achieve, uh, what your platform should do and how the, you, you can improve their, their work, their life. I think it's one of the, the, the starting points to uh, building a platform. Uh, yes, definitely. This relates a lot of the points we have seen before and the eight here is probably one of the aspects that most often kills our platform initiatives is the hidden cost of change management. Launching a platform means in the end that we are aiming to impact in a meaningful way the way our software engineers, our operations, our site reliability engineers, etc. perform their daily work. But changing people's habits is very difficult because typically they have a very good reason for that habit is because it makes them efficient at what they do. And so impacting and changing habits of people, individuals and organizations is very complex and is often typically not something that the platform engineering team is prepared to do. Yeah. Uh, this is really true, and so uh, I think that um, after we share with you all these uh, like pitfalls uh, that we saw um, along the way, um, we, I think we can summarize that the, um, why we, we try to shift the focus because uh, we believe that our platform engineering things are really great and building software. Uh, we saw a lot of people really with great uh, skills, uh, with passion, uh, with great knowledge and some, a lot of this quality, but uh, can't achieve the, the result that they would like to expect. Because uh, usually mm, we don't mm, put in realizing our platform uh, the same energy also invested in some other key aspects for a platform, like marketing, user experience and digital product. Management. I don't know if you want to talk about this aspect. I think in the end these are key elements that you should always consider when launching a digital product. And if you remember your platform must be considered a product as well. You need to plan to have the talent, the skills, the experience in your team to be able to uh, manage these aspects as well. Yeah. Uh, I think this is a famous thread that uh, thread everybody you wanna. Uh, report something about this thread. It's really common. To, it, it said we spent months building this platform. That's eight. We help me understand why this can summarize uh, the pitfalls that we talked before. So the problem that probably we don't talk to each of them uh, before to start your platform journey, and now you uh, have come to this point. Yeah, but in the end, I think we can say maybe. The concept in the slide is a little bit extreme, but the fact is that even if you spend a lot of time and energy and you really dream about your platform and give it a lot of effort uh, every day, most of the people in your organization have other problems, other priorities, and uh, they don't care so much about your platform per se. So you really don't want to be enabling the platform as a technology, you want to work with them to help them understand that through your platform you are enabling them to greater outcomes, to better achieve their desired results. And this is a shift in focus in the narrative and it is all about building a consistent narrative of empower, of, for the people to feel empowered and active part of the platform journey as well. Yeah, and uh, I think so that uh, what you're talking about, it's really important. You have to bring the developer in your journey, and I think that uh, the key is to make the other developer uh, to love your platform, to make, you should do, you should make and build your platform to make it lovable. But I don't know if now it's the time to give uh, some suggestion or uh, 
some positive <laughs> history that we see along our, our Yeah, I think day. that would be nice, Paul. Okay, I think you can start with the, with the first one. So the first story I want to share with you is uh, about a digital native company, a scale-up in the energy sector, which adopted an approach that we would call the minimum viable product or minimum viable platform. The essence of this approach, I think, is very well known to all of you. We don't focus to cover the entirety of our use cases. We select the number one priority case to provide, start providing quickly business value with a Pareto efficient approach. And this company, as I was said, is a small company, doesn't have a massive engineering structure, I think something around 40 engineers overall, but still they started focusing in the first place on the specific needs of two teams that needed to collaborate. One team was in charge of creating a data product, the single view of the customer in their case, and the second need was working on an application that needed to consume the data product for its uh, delivering a digital experience to the end users of the, of the company. They targeted the uh, data fabric, style of architecture, etc. But the fact is, this initiative was successful, I think, because the focus from the beginning was on the shared needs among the two teams and of course also on the specific needs of the single team so was immediately providing business value to those teams to start collaborating and created buy-in from the business on that initial success and consensus that the platform was really helping the collaboration and so this helped a lot expand to the rest of the population in the organization yeah I, the second case we would like to talk about is a completely different scenario because this is a, a really big company, it's a global manufacturing company based in the US but with uh, uh, over a thousand engineers around the globe. So they have like engineers in India, um, China, South America, Europe, ar around the world. Uh, the idea of the platform uh, is also uh, it's a really uh, strategic idea and at the sea level uh, that uh, push for this initiative. And we don't think that uh, most of the time at this, uh, this uh, great political capital always bring to a success. Uh, it's, it's not always the, the key, this one. Uh, but we think that the, the real uh, key for the success of this, um, of this initiative is that the, the most of the budget uh, uh, was put for the training and for the engagement part uh, because they want that all the people inside the company uh, was onboarded in this project uh, and uh, uh, have a full comprehension of the platform and so they invested a lot in training and uh, engage with the, with the developers uh, around the globe. Okay, so the third uh... Success story I want to share is about a multinational company, larger system integrator, that found itself to have built over time different developer tools that were somehow reusable and started considering these as part of a common toolbox, managing it together, and in the end assembling a first version of an internal platform provided to their engineering organization. And this story continues in kind of an unexpected turn they decide in the end to throw away the platform they have built and start a new one from scratch. And why is this? I guess it may seem kind of stupid to just throw away something you, you built over time and that provided value, but we've seen this actually a number of times in different scenarios and it made sense for a number of reasons. First reason is that this whole platform engineering discipline, if you want, is relatively new, relatively young, and it's not so easy to find the experience, the skills, the competence to build a consistent, maintainable uh, platform as a product in the first place. But going along the way with trial and error, you kind of make the expertise and you understand better what you really want. Also, the the first implementations may be a very good way to make emerge some hidden needs of the organizations that were in the beginning overlooked or underestimated and then you realize provide greater value 
and are most benefit and so should be the focus of the platform. But again, you don't want your platform to grow and grow and grow over time because it will not become maintainable. So here is a very important effect in the concept, very well highlighted in the book, uh, the topologies of uh, thinnest viable platform, which is not about just building an MVP, but is about investing in keeping your platform as thin as possible in the long term so you can guarantee that it is maintainable. And this may mean avoid continuously adding new stuff to the platform, but it may also mean, yes, including new stuff in the platform, but maybe throwing away some old stuff that is not more so necessary, or that may have become more of a commodity over time. So we work in a market of technologies that evolve very rapidly, and they tend to be new, then standardized, then commoditized. We want to maintain our platform thinness and most close as possible to our business value. And so probably we can start in time disposing of lower parts of the platform that can be maybe purchased from the market, externalized, outsourced, if they're not so distinctive and essential. Okay, so yeah, uh, I think this is uh, like uh, a fast but uh, good overview of all the like some strategies that you can adopt in your uh, company and in your in your organization to enable a platform team and to have some like uh, aspect to enlighten when you have to start so i think we should summarize something for our user uh, yes but first maybe let me thank you some of the and credit some of the people in the community uh, book, shared knowledge that help us uh, put together this, uh, this content. Definitely there is much more out there on this topic. Uh, every day someone is writing and sharing their experience on this. Uh, so hopefully continuing to share the things we do when we discover in our work uh, as a community, we will uh, soon have more experience and more understanding and uh, build better platforms uh, for our engineers every day. Okay, I think that we can like give some takeaways. And so the first one is that the goal of platform engineering is to provide a better self-service developer experience. Remember that the goal is your developer and that should improve their uh, experience of, uh, of working. Uh, the second one is that technology and organization are closely connected. You can just focus on technology, so you should also see the both sides of the medal. And the third one is that change people's habits it's actually one of the most challenging tasks. You should really uh, have this in mind every time, uh, and you should really work on so this. You should improve the habits of the people, and uh, like this maybe takes uh, a little time, but it's uh, really important to have in mind. And then the, most of the play are platform fail to collaboration issue that is like the, the global topic of what we discussed today. Really, collaboration and communication are two keys, essential keys to the success of a platform. And uh, I, I leave to you the, the biggest challenge. Uh, we were speaking about that before. So it's not about building a platform, it's about uh, making it uh, adopted at scale, loved by your users, uh, because through them you will build the success of the platform itself. Okay, so thank you and see you around conferences and other platform. Uh, bye. Have a good day. Bye. Cheers.